The European Space Laboratory Columbus is ready for launch. The laboratory is closed, all systems are checked and installed. The next step is to transfer Columbus and the external payload carrier by canister to the Space Shuttle Atlantis, where they'll be mounted into the cargo bay in the second week of November. Then, there'll be less than one month to go until ESA's space laboratory is launched into space towards the International Space Station. We're about to go through a big transition on the, uh, the program. We've, uh, we've been designing and developing and waiting to fly for a long, long time. And in the, uh, in the next four months, we're going to put 45 tons up onto uh, to the station with Node 2, with Columbus, and then following early in the new year with the, uh, the ATV. So that gives us the opportunity at last to, uh, to be on board the station, to perform the world-class science and technology that, uh, that we want to do, to, uh, to have the astronauts on there, to, uh, to perform their iterative science, the, the added value of human beings in space to perform the science and technology work that uh, they can do, and also for them to prepare themselves for exploration missions into the, uh, in the future. But perhaps more than all of that, it'll be the opportunity for all of that activity to become an inspiration for the, uh, for the youth of, uh, of Europe to get the, uh, the kids and the students to really take up the science and the engineering that's so necessary for, uh, for Europe to develop in the, uh, in the decades to come. Columbus is one of the most important European contributions to the International Space Station. In the same way as other ISS elements, Columbus will be taken out of the shuttle's cargo bay with a robotic arm. It will then be attached to another European built element, the Node 2. As you can see, this is a laboratory. It's a pressurized laboratory. It's about uh, five meter long, four meter diameter, and it uh, uh, accommodates what you can see here, uh, scientific experiments. Here you have four racks, and it can accommodate up to 16 racks of scientific experiments. And it allows uh, three crew members to uh, operate this module and to generate science uh, uh, in a short sleeve environment. In addition to that, there is an external platform outside that can accommodate up to four mm -hmm. um, uh, facilities. Uh, we are going to launch two of them, Solar and UTEF, and they accommodate outside on the, the so-called the so EPF. Each rack is a laboratory in its own right for research in different disciplines in space. The European Draw Rack is designed for scientific experiments in a variety of subjects in all of its seven interchangeable drawers. The European physiology modules are dedicated to experiments to better understand the workings of the human body. Biolab is designed for biological research in space, investigating the role that microgravity plays on all functions of an organism. Together with the EPM, experiments in medical and pharmaceutical research will be performed, aimed at the application of improving health on Earth. The Fluid Science Laboratory allows research into the dynamics of fluids, the first experiment to be performed might help to better understand the flow of the fluids in the outer core of Earth. External experiment facilities can be mounted outside Columbus. Two of these will be launched together with Columbus this year. The first, called UTEF, includes several technology demonstration experiments, including exposure to space of new materials. The other, SOLAR, measures the radiation from the sun to understand its influence on Earth's atmosphere and its climate. The internal facilities are already installed in Columbus, so that the experiments can start immediately after it has arrived at the ISS. On board, the ISS ESA astronaut Leopold Eartz will support the activation and checkout of Columbus and its experiment facilities. Well, the scope of this Columbus mission is, this is the first mission for Columbus, so we are going to bring it up in the shuttle and then uh, un unload it from, from the uh, payload bay of the shuttle and attach it to the station. And then we'll make all the connections and uh, activate the module. And then there will be, during the, the rest of the flight, which is a long duration flight for me, a lot of commissioning tasks. means making sure that all the systems, all the uh, scientific facilities are working correctly. While Leopold Eartz and his crewmates will conduct experiments in Columbus, the researchers on ground can take part in their investigations as if they too were on board, thanks to advanced communication technology and imaging systems. The experiments carried out in Columbus will be scheduled and supervised from the Columbus Control Center at Oberpfaffenhofen in Germany. Through this control center, researchers all over Europe can receive the results of their experiments in real time.
Former ESA astronaut Reinhold Ewald is one of the ESA mission directors for the Columbus operations. The Columbus Control Center will come into action soon. We are simulating right now the mission of the Columbus Laboratory. The Columbus Laboratory will be attached to the International Space Station and then the Columbus Control Center will join the uh, sequence of control centers all over the world, Houston, Moscow and uh, Munich will be called in order to control the systems of the Columbus uh, Laboratory. Although Columbus is smaller in length than the other modules of the ISS, thanks to the ingenuity of the European engineers that have designed Columbus, it offers the same number of racks for research as the American and Japanese laboratories. And, by being smaller, all the initial internal and external payloads are launched together with the module, thereby saving extra launches, time and expense. Once in place, Columbus will begin to bear the fruits of Europe's investment in the ISS program. Its scientific results will give us a greater understanding of life on Earth and further the development of technology. And it will undoubtedly make every European feel proud that their space agency, ESA, is a part of the biggest international research project ever undertaken.